Why do the years go by so quickly? I just am genuinely baffled by how quickly 2019 just came and went. Feels like a fucking second ago that 2019 just started and I was like, oh, I'm so looking forward to this year. So many big things are probably going to happen this year. So many great things are probably going to happen to me. (laughs) Yeah, that didn't happen. But also, it felt like just a second ago, I would just got done finishing up my uh, worst YouTubers of 2018 video, and I was like, I don't have to worry about this for another year. I don't have to worry about compiling a list of 10 YouTubers who did shitty things, record all the segments for that video, work on the video for, like, for, for a very long time, because these videos usually take a while to make. And yet, here we are again. We're at the very end of 2019, and we're about to enter a brand new decade. Jesus Christ, the 2010s flew by. But anyways... Here I am again also compiling another list of 10 YouTubers who did really shitty things this year. Anyways, I won't stall any further because I'm sure you're really, really excited to see who made the cut for this list. Anyway, without further ado, here are the worst YouTubers of 2019. I'm Alex is a relatively popular YouTube commentary channel that you've probably heard of, and you've probably heard of this situation that uh, that occurred throughout the summer of this year. Uh, basically, back around May, some really damning allegations came out against another YouTuber named Slazo. He's another relatively popular commentary channel, but I never heard of him until this situation, until after he cleared his name to be more specific. In a nutshell, a series of pretty serious allegations came out against Lazo from an ex-girlfriend named Shay. Basically, these were her allegations. Michael, which is unfortunately Slazo's real name, was incredibly demanding of sexual favors and would often guilt or force me into situations to which I was not comfortable. If I was to try and deny or argue against him, he would become aggressive, Shay wrote. Um, Michael would often yell or become upset when I refused or said I was not in the mood. To this, the only way to calm him was for me to send him images or undress on camera. We lived three hours away from each other by train, so most of the time this was our only contact. Their only only contact being Discord. Shay's allegations on Twitter weren't the only thing pinned against Lazo at this time. Shay also provided a series of screenshots of private Discord conversations that date back to 2016, 2017, back when this relationship took place. And uh, most of the, pretty much all these screenshots were either doctored or completely taken out of context. And when you read some of these with no context whatsoever, yeah, they are pretty bad. Like this, for example. Baby, when I get back, it's rape time. <laughs> what the fuck? I'm sorry. No, sad face. Yes, but you will like it. So technically not rape. Sad face. So yes, out of context, those screenshots seem terrible, but pretty much Slazo made a really long response video regarding all these allegations. Pretty much putting out the fire regarding these allegations, and he's th- he then said, yes, that was just really stupid, edgy humor. And I don't defend that whatsoever, that's really fucking stupid of him to say, but he, re- he apologized for that. He realizes it's stupid, so I won't exactly hold his feet to the fire too much for that. Anyways... The re- really the reason why I'm Alex is on this list is because initially I'm Alex completely sided with Shay, and I'm not really gonna exactly blame him there. There was all this these really damning screenshots and these really damning allegations. I'm not saying I'm Alex should have like right off the bat called her a lying cunt because that's also terrible, but at least have a little bit of skepticism regarding shit like this dude because you, Slazo never got a chance at the time when you made your videos against Slazo pinning him as a sexual abuser. He never was able to get his side of the story out yet and you were already labeling him as a sexual abuser and you were his fucking friend. That's what makes this all the more terrible. I'm Alex and Slazo were actually friends and I'm Alex was totally willing to put his friend uh, to, to pretty much dispose of his friend out them as a sexual abuser when they're not really a sexual abuser. Slazo also refuted these sexual abuse claims in his really long response video. And it really goes to show what kind of a person you are and and what kind of a friend you are as well. When you're totally willing to throw your friend under the bus when you see it as a good financial opportunity. Because he monetized his video on Slazo as well. He probably saw this as a good way to get some good views because people will see him as a really good person because he's supporting a supposed victim of supposed abuse that really didn't go on. All the while, his friend is at the brunt of unwarranted harassment over things that really didn't happen. 
what a piece of shit you are. Again, sexual abuse claims are really, really serious, and you have to wait to get both sides of the story until you can actually formulate an opinion and and talk about who's in the right, who's in the wrong, and there is no damning, there is no 100% concrete evidence to support that he was, in fact, a sexual abuser. There was no one else that corroborated her claims. She didn't have any empirical evidence to, uh, to, to, to back up that he really did do these things. It was just literally her word against his, and he provided some actual concrete evidence to prove that this did not, in fact, happen. There was no apology whatsoever from Alex, no retraction at all, just him instead doubling down and trying to sweep the whole situation under the rug and ignoring it and trying to pretend that it never happened at all. What a fucking scumbag. Anyways, let's move on now. Boogie2988 is hopelessly centrist. Holy shit. He will try to find the middle ground for fucking anything. Even if a situation or subject is so cut and dry, he will still try to play centrist and still try to find a middle ground. Like, for example, he went on some stupid alt-right podcast once, and he was talking about the Holocaust, and he was like, well, the Holocaust was a terrible, terrible event, but there was some good that came out of it, because there was some medical advancements that came from the Holocaust, yeah, because that that somehow makes up for mass genocide. And one time, someone tweeted at him saying they were suicidal. And what does Boogie do? He says, well, don't kill yourself, it's not worth it, things will get better. But then in the same fucking tweet, he follows that up with, but at the same time, this world sucks, I wouldn't blame you if you killed yourself. What the fuck kind of thing is that to say to someone who is suicidal, dude? Aren't you yourself suicidal, supposedly, Boogie? You like to harp on that a lot, and trust me, I'll be getting to that. But anyways, aren't you yourself suicidal? Would you really like it if you, if you talk to someone and tell them about your suicidal urges and tell them how life just isn't worth living anymore, and then, yeah, they tell you, yeah, you should continue to persist because things will eventually get better and you should not kill yourself because that is a very terrible thing to do and will affect many people around you more than you think it will. But then in the same vein, they say, well, I also wouldn't blame you if you decided to kill yourself. Would you really appreciate it if someone said that to you if you're in a moment of crisis? I sure as fuck wouldn't, especially if the person telling me this was some big time YouTuber that I looked up to. You you don't know how the fuck that could affect people, dude. You you're in such a high position. Many, many people look up to you and come to you for advice because for the longest time, you were the advice giver. You were the guy that people looked up to. You were the supposed Mr. Rogers of the internet. And you go ahead, say, you go ahead and say shit like this to people on Twitter. The guy is an overall piece of shit, and I can't believe there was actually one point where I unironically un thought that Boogie was actually the Mr. Rogers of YouTube. Jesus, what an erroneous title now. That certainly aged well. Uh, anyways, there's just been so many controversies surrounding Boogie this year alone, like the Tesla drama thing. He bought a $100,000 Tesla and then complained that he was in debt even though he's already loaded and he was begging his fans to like donate to him so he could pay off this car again even though he's fucking loaded so his fans are pretty he's just pretty much siphoning money out of his fans manipulating his fans for money and also let's not forget the whole controversy that went down a few months ago where he freaked out on twitch because he was getting some trolls in his twitch chat or whatever and then he was like well you you guys are worse than rapists and nazis because at least rapists and nazis stood up for what they believed in which what the fuck is that even supposed to mean and also, dude, how the fuck can you can you even remotely compare your trolls to people who rape other people, to literal Nazis, people who have committed a mass genocide? Yeah, because the people who don't like you on the internet, the people who say mean things about you on the inter internet, are even in the same ballpark as those people. Yeah, right. Boki has had controversy after controversy after controversy, and he just does not seem to learn from it whatsoever. He always throws a pity party for himself. Every time he is called out, he plays the depression card, the suicide card, to ad nauseum, and people are starting to finally see through it, and because Boogie always throws, always conveniently throws a pity party after he gets a huge amount of criticism from people online. He is always conveniently in a huge depression. He's always conveniently suicidal when he gets himself into one of his many controversies. 
At this point, it is it is just so obvious that he is playing his his audience for sympathy. He, for whatever reason, is so obsessed with the idea of people online giving him sympathy. Oh, poor you, Boogie. Poor you. People are saying mean things about you online. Let's coddle you. Thankfully, more and more people are starting to see through the bullshit and realize Boogie, uh, Boogie is just playing them and is not a good person at all and is not worth their sympathy whatso fucking ever. So, Oh yeah, fuck Boogie2988. I can't stand the guy, and I'm glad his channel is dying now. <laughs> it is just truly a sight to behold. And I know, I've already made my thoughts on Boogie2988 more than clear. I've made several videos on the guy already, but any opportunity I get to dunk on the guy even more, I'll gladly take it because the guy is just that much of a piece of shit who manipulates his fans for money and sympathy. Alright, I'm done talking about Boogie. For now, until he inevitably gets himself into yet another controversy. Ooh, the hype is real. I so can't wait for that to happen. Again. <laughs> Anyways, let's move on to the next piece of shit, shall we? <laughs> Unbox Therapy is a wildly popular tech channel that, well, unboxes tech and reviews tech like smartphones or computers or tech accessories like smartphone cases or anything of the sort, and then he proceeds to place what he is reviewing and unboxing on the table and then has a therapy session with those things that he unboxed and vents about how shitty his life is. <laughs> I'm kidding about that last part. That would make his channel so much more interesting, but you probably know him from the whole iPhone 6 Bengate fiasco. That was really his big break on YouTube. He was pretty much the ringleader of that massively, massively over-exaggerated fiasco, but that's obviously not why he's on this list, because that was over five years ago now. The reason he's on this list is because just recently, earlier this month, he was in some pretty hot water over a smartphone case that he supposedly made. He revealed this smartphone case in a video called Don't Ruin Your Smartphone, and the, this, this case is called Later Case because his name is Lou Later. I huh, get it? <laughs> Whatever. Anyways, it turns out that this case was a complete ripoff of another case made by a company called Pataka. Here's a picture comparing the two cases. There is the Later Case on the top and the Pataka case on the bottom. As you can see, they look almost completely completely identical. The later case looks a little lighter and the Pataka case is a little darker, but the same pattern design that's on the back is present in both cases, and from what I've seen in, in reviews of the later case comparing the later case to the Pataka case, they feel almost exactly the same. So Lou completely ripped off this company's case. Lou has even unboxed and reviewed Pataka's cases in the past. He is fully aware of these cases. This isn't some kind of freak coincidence or anything, and he's highly praised Pataka's cases because he's made more than clear that he hates smartphone cases. He thinks they're either too bulky or too flimsy, or they break easily, things like that, and I could kind of sort of see where he's coming from. I've had my experience with a fair share of really shitty smartphone cases in the past, but anyways, he highly praised this case, so I guess he figured, you know what? You want to know what would be great? If I, if I ripped off this case and slapped my own name on it and made it seem like I made this case. Suckers will buy it because, you know, I'm on box therapy, bro. I got over 15 million subscribers. I'm a huge name in this YouTube game. Thankfully, most people are seeing through the bullshit, and Pataka has been rightfully calling him out for his blatant ripoff smartphone case. And to make matters worse, he's even false DMCA'd Pataka's little advertisement for their cases. They showcased a bunch of YouTube reviewers praising their cases, and Lou just happened to be one of the people in this compilation in this ad, and he false DMCA'd this ad saying, oh, they used a clip of my video without my permission. Yeah, bullshit, dude. You just want to make it seem like you you had nothing to do with this case. You want to sweep your your praise of this case under the rug for so people won't catch on to your bullshit. And he's even removed his reviews of the Pataka cases off of his channel. You can't find these videos anymore because they're conveniently gone after he after he unveiled his uh, the, the smartphone case that he quote-unquote made. And he even had the balls to say, well, I tried reaching out to Pataka in hopes to collaborate with them to make this case, but they never got back to me, and Pataka's CEO has confirmed that he had never tried reaching out to them. They have never received an email or a phone call or any contact of the sort 
from Lou. So he just completely pulled that out of his ass to, in hopes to deflect some, some criticism off of his back. You're a scam artist and an utter fraud. After this whole fiasco, I'm even more glad I never liked and watched your stupid ass channel. You probably don't remember this guy, or probably don't even remember him by his face, or probably don't even know him at all. And I, would, and I wouldn't really blame you, this guy kind of popped in and popped out. He was only really prevalent on this site for about a month, and that's it. He kind of just noped out. So anyways, why is this guy on this list? Well, first off, he started a whole hashtag, a whole campaign against pedophiles on YouTube. It was called hashtag YouTube Wake Up, and uh, he he was exposing like these little pedophile rings on YouTube under like otherwise completely harmless videos, completely harmless like family friendly videos, and these kind of disgusting people would post timestamps in the comments, and uh, 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 pr pretty much these timestamps would lead to whenever a child would maybe be in a little bit of a questionable position or doing something that could be even remotely construed as sexual. And it's on, and it's obviously really, really disgusting. There are other kind of like little dog whistles that uh, pedophiles would post in these kind of comments. And Matt Watson exposed to this, and obviously that is amazing. Obvi I'm not gonna knock him for that. But what he prompted people to do is what many people have a major problem with and what landed him on this list. He then prompted people to spam advertisers like Disney and other types of corporations that have their advertisements, that, that host their advertisements on YouTube. He prompted people to spam them on Twitter and other forms of social media to pull their advertisements from YouTube because of this little pedophile ring that's going on, making it seem like YouTube is actually okay with this. YouTube actually willingly solicits these pedophile rings on their site, when obviously that is far from reality. But these advertisers obviously don't know better and they don't, they don't want another, you know, hit piece written on them and get a huge controversy surrounding them so they pulled out before any of that could happen and obviously that really harmed the livelihoods of a lot of people who are completely harmless and don't have comment sections filmed to the brim with this disgusting shit. And it turns out Matt's intentions probably weren't that noble. Uh, people were kind of confused as to where the fuck this guy came from because he just kind of popped up out of nowhere and he went viral like almost literally overnight with this huge campaign against YouTube and prompting people to spam advertisers to pull out of YouTube. So people did some digging, and it, it turns out that he had a really old YouTube channel, and uh, there's some, some videos from 2017 resurfaced, and one of them was really creepy. It was called it How a Cam Girl Ruined My Life. It was a comedy skit, but at one point, there was some girl who was probably around like 17 or something. He pulled up and said to this girl, Hey, you want to make an adult video? Obviously... He probably didn't mean that, hopefully not, and uh, obviously it was a comedy skit, but still, that is weird beyond belief and really makes you look like a complete fucking creep, almost kind of like the creeps that you were calling out in your whole campaign. So Matt was exposed as a complete fraud who was bitter that he had a failed YouTube channel, so he wants to ruin monetization for everyone else because he can't make a livelihood off of YouTube. What a fucking crybaby. I mean, I again, I commend you for exposing this disgusting shit, but at the same time, fuck you for, you know, for your true intentions behind this. It shows that you actually don't care and just want to tear other people channels down because you're bitter that you didn't make it on YouTube. Fuck you. <laughs> Madam, or should I say Princess Ash, she recently changed her username following her controversies, got her claim to fame when she said she was going to sue Onision. Why is she suing Onision? Well, Onision has been going around for the longest time now, claiming a lot of his detractors' videos, basically eliminating any money they can make off their videos against Onision, and all the money goes to Onision after he claims it. That's obviously how claiming videos on YouTube works. So Princess Ash, or Madam, whatever, I'm going to call her Madam because that's what most people know her by, took it upon herself to say she is going to sue Onision, and she started a fundraising campaign to raise enough money to successfully sue Onision. Only problem is there's no evidence that th to suggest that this lawsuit even exists. People started rightfully getting upset at her because they donated their money to her, trusting her to actually go through with this lawsuit, and they felt it was a just cause to donate to, only for her to scam them out of their money, more than likely. 
And she claims uh, uh, time and time again that this lawsuit is indeed going on. And she even uh, recorded herself going to the going to a courthouse, filing paperwork and such, making the the, the the wheels turn with this lawsuit. And then she and then after people started calling her out, she conveniently was like, "Oh well, everyone is mean to me on the internet. You don't deserve to see this footage, so I'm deleting this footage off my hard drive, so none of you are going to ever see it." In reality, what's almost certainly the case here is she never planned on this lawsuit ever going through fruition. It was all just a big scam because she knows Onision is a hot topic and anything that has to do with suing Kim or putting Kim in his place in any kind of way is going to get a bunch of money thrown its way and will bring a lot of attention, new subscribers, new viewers to her channel and boost her in popularity. That's all this really is, more than likely. And basically she scammed people out of their money. <laughs> I can't really say I feel too bad for those people who donated, who willingly donated to her, but oh well. But what's even worse than all this is, a, a few months ago, a 15-year-old artist drew some fan art for Madam, and Madam wanted to use her art in her video, so she was like, hey, uh, I'll pay you some money if you let me use this fan art in my videos. And the girl was like, no, I'm just 15, I don't have a PayPal account or any of that. Then she was like, well, I could at least link to certain social media sites or, or give you credit in any in some kind of way and the girl was like okay cool I'm fine with that and uh, madam never actually ended up doing that for whatever reason and when this 15 year old girl went to confront madam for not giving her credit when she wanted credit madam was madam just decided to go fucking crazy and doxed a, uh, and doxed this girl's number well it wasn't a, it wasn't her real phone number it was a whatsapp phone number but the intention was still there she st madam still thought that this phone number was uh, that this this was WhatsApp phone number was still the girl's real phone number. So when cornered about something that she is clearly in the wrong in, she decides to resort to doxing. How great. And despite all this, despite all these controversies, Madam still thinks she's in the right. She's still chugging along on YouTube. She's still bleeding subscribers. Her videos still get a fuck ton of dislikes. Even all this time later, her videos still average like, I don't know, a hundred or maybe even a little less likes versus like 500 to even over a thousand dislikes. It's crazy. Why she decides to continue pursuing YouTube even though her reputation is absolutely done for and really no one aside from like five people like her anymore is truly beyond me. She lacks any sort of self-awareness whatsoever and she still continues to paint herself as the victim. Which if she wants to continue being like that, fine. She's gonna have a lot of trouble in the real world whenever she's call called out on some bullshit, certainly, but hey, that's how she chooses to live her life, so I guess I can't knock her too much for that, right? Enjoy continuing to be a piece of shit, madam. This guy's channel is just stuck in 2017. Remember back then when you would see a lot of videos with titles like these? Don't call this fictional character at 3 a.m. or else this will happen or calling this fictional character at 3 a.m. Oh my god, they answered. Well, this guy's channel is still like that to this day. Uh, he seems to not have adapted at all. He seems to not be interested at all in changing up his content and doing different things. He just seems content with beating the old tired horse that have that has long since died, like, over a year ago. But if he just made shitty content for gullible children, he would not be on this list. What he did earlier this year is just legitimately disgusting. As you all know, back in late June, a, a popular YouTube streamer, Etika, committed suicide. And this douchebag decided to make a video calling Etika at 3 a.m., quote-unquote. He even fucking literally started off his video with, Want to join my free gift card giveaway? Sub to my channel? Like my video? Comment all of this shit? Like, how fucking disrespectful can you be, dude? It's so obvious you don't give a shit about his death at all. You don't give a shit about the people who were affected, in the, uh, affected by this at all. You didn't give a shit about his mental health at all. You just saw his death as a good thing to capitalize is off of and it, it it backfired so massively the guy got inundated with hate and then he took down his uh, he took down this video and then he uploaded quite possibly the worst apology ever on YouTube and I say this a lot I know but I think I think this is it I think this is easily the worst apology I've ever seen on YouTube 
and I know it, it has quite a bit of competition, but this takes the cake. The apology was literally him, not even really apologizing, but he said, oh, well, it was my, it, I didn't actually call him at 3 a.m. Yeah, bu- yeah, no shit, dude. We know you didn't actually call him at 3 a.m., but our problem with your video was that you fucking saw Etika's death as a good opportunity to, to, to make some, to, to, to make some views, to make some money off of. Do you seriously lack that much awareness how stupid can one person be jesus christ all right i know another guy by the name of j station also kind of sort of was in a similar controversy surrounding etika's death because he clickbaited people initially saying that he was going to call etika at 3 a.m and but instead the video was him discussing why he won't uh, call Etika at 3 a.m., and obviously that is beyond disrespectful, too, because he clickbaited people to capitalize off of Etika's death. But at the very, very least, that J Station dude didn't actually go through with the 3 a.m. challenge, and this guy did. So that makes this guy ten times worse than that other piece of shit, in my opinion. If this guy were to die relatively early in life, like Etika, I hope to God there would be people doing the stupid 3 a.m. challenge with this guy. If NNA Productions is going to be a disrespectful prick regarding other people's deaths, then why should people respect his death exactly? Brooke Hout is a YouTube vlogger whom I never heard of until just a few months ago. In summer of 2019, Brooke Hout started making a lot of cutesy wootsy videos with her dog. Uh, it was the typical harmless, here's me and my dog doing cute things. Me playing with my dog, me pranking my dog. Here's my dog running around acting all hyper. Uh, presumably this is all just to boost her channel and views and popularity. Uh, her videos are kind of sort of in the toilet for her channel her size right before she adopted the dog. So things were pretty uncontroversial until August when she made Quite possibly one of the dumbest mistakes ever in YouTube history. So you see, she she did a video pranking her dog, uh, putting a plastic wrap around a door to see if the dog would run into the plastic wrap or jump right over it. And she accidentally uploaded the raw footage of the video, the unedited version of the video. You see, in the uh, it, it, the, the, the the final product was. Very, very highly edited, a bunch of jump cuts, and you see why she she put in all these jump cuts in her videos. Because when the raw footage was uploaded, it was exposed that she slaps her dog around, pushes it, spits on it, tackles it. All of this stupid, all this really terrible, terrible shit. After this, the internet was rightfully after her, and then she was quick to issue an apology on her Twitter, saying, Oh, I was just having a bad week. Uh, the, the re- the, that wasn't the real me in that video. Uh, trust me, I am always so loving around my dogs. I treat th- I treat them with nothing but kindness and love and respect. Yeah, bullshit. You were caught and uh, you were caught abusing your dog, and you tried to pull and, and you tried to pull anything out of your ass in order to damage control, and it didn't work at all. And then after about a month of silence, she uploads another video uh, following this controversy, saying, "I am so proud of all of you for calling me out. It shows that you stand up for what you believe in." And, and talk against what you feel is very, very unjust. Just this preachy bullshit in order to manipulate people into liking her again. And again, this didn't work at all. But unfortunately, she, she still has custody of the dog. Police investigated into this and no, so her dog wasn't taken away. The dog is still in her custody. Even though there is literally video evidence of her slapping around her dog, tackling it, punching it, uh, spitting on it, all of this terrible, terrible shit. No, she's not going to be charged with animal abuse. What a world we live in. And also, I, I, I just can't believe her channel's still up. She uploaded this shit onto her own channel. And when people re-uploaded this video, here's the kicker, when people re-uploaded this video of her beating the uh, beating up her dog their videos got taken down but her channel is strike free what the fuck youtube this was actual animal abuse uploaded onto your site which you have rules against and you're not going to punish her in any way shape or form 
Okay, makes a ton of sense. And here's the real shit kicker. Like Madam, Brooke Hout's returned to YouTube. Now, she hasn't uploaded anything in a month, so maybe she learned her lesson, I don't know, or maybe she's just taking another break until she comes back to YouTube yet again, but... She actually did try to come back to YouTube, and of course, the the like-to-dislike ratio is absolutely destroyed. She has, like, a couple of hundred of likes versus thousands of dislikes. No one likes her, and she's desperately trying to salvage her destroyed reputation. Just give up. Don't even try. People hate you now because people know you are a piece-of-shit animal abuser who pretty much got away scot-free. <sighs> I gotta go pet Charlie now. I hate animal abusers so much, and I hate talking about them so much. They, they just fuel me with so much anger. <laughs> this waste of oxygen is part of, or was part of, Jake Paul's little Team 10 group. That was his claim to fame here on this website. So... Back in July, a very, very disturbing clip surfaced via a girl named Angelica. She posted this on her Instagram, and the video depicts uh, Ray screaming at the top of his lungs at her, threatening physical violence, uh, say, telling her to kill herself at multiple points in this video. Really, really terrible shit. You can clearly hear her crying while he's screaming at her and threatening her. So then, after this clip surfaced, I guess Ray threatened her again because she went out and and said, well, this clip was fake. It was just, it was just voice acting. That's all. Well, <laughs> she then went on Keemstar's show shortly after this to detail all of the really horrible things she went through while with this guy. And by the way, she is 16 and Ray Diaz is 33 years old. And she confirmed that they were actually dating while they were together. And while she didn't explicitly say they were in a sexual relationship when they were still together, Keemstar did ask, were you two sexually active? And she, and she said this instead. Well, we were dating, so that should answer your question. Strongly hinting to yes. The legal age of consent in California, where this all took place in, is 18, so <laughs> yikes. The girl then told Keemstar that one time when the police were looking for her, I believe her mother contacted authorities on Ray. Uh, Diaz then forced her to go into the box spring of his bed. He, uh, he then put a mattress on top of her, and then he had another girl sit on top of that mattress so he could show police, Hey, look, she's not here. You got the wrong guy. You gotta go search somewhere else because... She's clearly not here. All the while, Angelica was, of course, in the bed. She was told not to make a single peep. This is like some shit you'd see in a movie, but there's people like this that are actually out there, and it's really, really scary. But you want to know what's the real, real tragedy here? <laughs> Barring everything I just told you up until this point, of course, I'm not discrediting any of the abuse this girl went through. All of this is terrible, but the, the worst thing about this whole situation is definitely the fact that, well... He was arrested under suspicion of sexual assault, and then he pleaded guilty, and he got away. Like Brooke Houts, he pretty much got away scot-free. What a world we live in, you know? People could post uh, videos of them abusing their dogs on a platform that has uh, rules against animal abuse and not be deplatformed. A guy could fucking abuse an underage girl and be released from jail. I mean, never mind, in both of these cases, there's video evidence that is damning to them. But no, 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 they get to get away scot-free. Fuck this world. Fuck this world. At the very, very least, Ray is cancelled. People know who the fuck he really is now. He probably won't be able to groom any more underage girls and fuck them and abuse them and all that really terrible, gross shit. Hopefully people- hopefully enough people know who he really is now. Now that all of this is out in the open, my total and utmost respect for Angelica for coming out against this monster and telling the world who he really is. <laughs> Fucking hell, I just can't avoid this guy. Just cannot avoid this guy. I've said on multiple occasions, I do not want to ever discuss Onision on this channel ever again, but he just keeps seeming to... Come back. Okay, I've seen the Chris Hansen interviews with his, uh, with Onision's victims and what they had to say about Onision and all the really horrible things that they've detailed uh, against Onision and the things I've had to go through while with Onision. 
I just couldn't resist. I, I tried my damnedest to not put him in this list for the longest time, but after hearing everything his victims have had to say about him and just overall how much of a piece of shit the guy is, he has to be on this list. I, I, I just couldn't justify him not being on this list. The rabbit hole goes so far deep with Onision. I could be here for like 40 minutes discussing him, but I'm not going to do that. Obviously, I'm not going to get every single little detail regarding him and what his victims have said about him in this short little segment, but I'll try my best to, you know, give you a general outline of why he, what he's done, why he's been under so much fire lately. Anyways, let's, let's, let's actually get to what he's done. So basically, Onision's whole career, he's been grooming girls who, mostly underage girls, who were fans of his, and manipulates them to eventually, when they turn 18, have sex with them. A prominent example of this being a girl by the name of Sarah. She went on ugh, Blair White's channel to uh, discuss this. Uh, Blair White did an interview with this girl, and this girl said that she was under Onision and Kai, Kai being Onision's spouse, uh, custody for a while, and then when the girl finally turned 18, that's when Onision and Kai finally fucked her. And there's also, uh, she also allegedly has sent Kai, um, pics of her topless while she was 17, under, under the age. And of course, she is far from the only girl to come out against Onision. There's also Shiloh, she, uh, recently went on Chris Hansen's little show on YouTube to tell him everything she's been through. It is all really, really terrible. If you really want to know the ins and outs of Shiloh and Onision's relationship, it is truly very interesting and also deeply disturbing. Go watch Chris Hansen's interview with her. It is definitely worth your time if you want to know more regarding this situation. And there's another girl named Billy who detailed this one time where Onision wanted her to stay locked in the basement for an extended period of time because she smoked weed, and I believe she smoked weed in some state where it was illegal, and Onision was like, you broke the law, you need to be punished, and he also wanted this, uh, he also wanted a, a, her to get a tattoo saying, I'm a liar, like, overall, this guy is human scum, genuinely human scum, and it's really, it's really a wonder to me why YouTube hasn't terminated him yet. He is obviously using his channels and his popularity, well, he used to be popular, he's not popular anymore, but you get my, you get, you, you get the gist. You know, he's using his influence online to lure in these young girls manipulate them into being in relationships with them, eventually fuck them, and he emotionally abuses them, and all of this terrible shit. Why doesn't YouTube do anything about this? Again, his channels are a vessel for this shit. He uses th his platform to lure in these girls, and yet YouTube just, want, just has no problem with this whatsoever. He was recently kicked off Patreon for, allegedly, doxing one of his victims. He has then since taken advantage of YouTube's uh, membership system, which is pretty much like Patreon, but I think Google takes a cut of the money, and it's on your YouTube channel, of course. You don't need to go to a completely uh, separate website to donate to him. It's all on his channel. He can st he can do that. So obviously, he can make he that's his form of income now through YouTube itself. After all of this, after all these allegations, after all this shit has come out against him, YouTube still allows him to stay here. And I really don't understand why. What the fuck is with YouTube's insistence to protect predators? And he clearly doesn't give a shit at all. He's been making these, like, clickbait videos to troll all the people who don't like him. I haven't seen any of these videos. I've only seen one re-upload of him reacting to his Patreon being shut down. But uh, apparently he's been trolling people saying, oh, I'm going to quit YouTube and work at McDonald's and other stupid things like that. Again, obvious shit post troll videos. He's even made videos apparently uh, parodying the Chris Hansen interviews, making a mockery of his victims and the people who are, who are rightfully outraged over all the things he has done in the past and is still doing now, uh, uh, coupled with his spouse who has also partaken in this predatory behavior. He has zero emotion whatsoever for other people. It is evident by all these videos he's been making, making a complete mockery of the whole situation. And by the way, don't watch those videos. Don't give him a view. Even if you have ad block on, do not give him a view. You are giving him what he wants, attention. Do not give him any of that. Only give the victims your attention. 
I've stretched this point f f far too many times and people are not going to listen. So what's the point of even saying this over and over again? Idiots are going to give Onision the attention he wants regardless of what I say, so whatever. I would say this is the final time I'm ever discussing Onision on this channel, but... I probably will discuss him again eventually if he does something that I deem worthy of making a video about. I, I, I give up. I'm probably going to speak about him again. There is absolutely nothing fantastic nor adventurous about what is going to be discussed in this portion of the video. Now, fair warning, if extreme child abuse is a subject that you cannot handle, and I mean this with all sincerity, uh, feel more than free to click off the video and stop watching here because, trust me when I say this, this is going to get above and beyond fucked up. Now, uh, Fantastic Adventures was, because the channel is gone now, YouTube deleted it, uh, was a channel that was pretty run-of-the-mill if you watch these videos without knowing any backstory behind this channel and these videos and these children. You know, t typical run-of-the-mill family fun time channels, uh, where the parents, or parent in this case, films their children running around having fun or, or, or playing with toys or things like that. Uh, I, I may not be doing a good job describing these kind of videos because obviously I'm not the target audience for, I'm not the uh, target audience for these videos, so I obviously don't watch these videos all too much, so I don't really know too much about them, but I'm sure you know what kind of what type of channel I'm describing here. And I never heard of this channel until after this whole situation was uncovered. Uh, but at its peak, from Google at least, um, according to Wikipedia I should say, uh, the channel had 800,000 subscribers at its peak, over 800,000 subscribers, and about 242 million views right before it got shut down. So it was a relatively big channel uh, within its little sphere on YouTube. Now, back in March, uh, Michelle Hobson, which is the lady you see here on the screen, her biological daughter, uh, filed a police report uh, regarding abuse of the children she... That, that, that this lady had under her care that were the stars of this YouTube channel. Uh, by the way, that the children who were in these videos were adopted. They're not actually Michelle's. Michelle was arrested following a wellness check uh, conducted by Arizona police. And the, while she was in police custody, they then interviewed the children who starred in these videos and were under her care. Uh, this is where the horrors that these children had to go through while under this woman's custody was uncovered. These children were horribly abused. This abuse included being forced to bathe in ice-cold water, and she would then uh, force their head under the ice-cold water they were bathing in. She would lock them in closets for extended periods of time. She would even beat these children with belts, hangers. She would even beat their genitals with belts and hangers, and she she even pinched their genitals really hard to the point where it was excruciating for these children. And there was even some accounts of this woman t taking a bottle of pepper spray. She would also regularly pepper spray the children. But there were some instances where this woman would take a bottle of pepper spray and spray one of the little girls in the vagina with the pepper spray. And when there were days where the children didn't feel like going in front of the camera and performing, she would then make them go days without eating or drinking anything. These children were also not in school for years. She kept them at home. She said they were homeschooled, but they were taught nothing pretty much. And basically, they were just little performance for uh, little performers for her to 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 make money off of and abuse the fuck out of. Now, I could yell, I could scream. I was originally going to go into this yelling and screaming and getting really upset, um, but you know, I I, I really don't want to do that. Um, I just want to discuss. Why I feel kids' content should not be on YouTube. Little kids' content should not be on YouTube. Well, for one, YouTube is obviously not for little kids under the age of 13. That is laid out in their rules very clearly. Obviously, that is not going to stop kids from making accounts on this website. But still, the site should not cater to kids. That's what I'm saying. It should not host kids' content. That's what I'm saying. But also, because of things like this, where abusive pieces of shit 
could uh, create children, or in this case, get custody of children, only to abuse them and see them as dollar signs so they could perform in, from, uh, in front of a camera and they could put these videos on YouTube and get millions of views off of these videos and make millions of dollars off of these videos. This woman was making $2 million a year, according to one of the news reports regarding the situation. They were sponsored by several toy brands. They were regularly sent toys for these kids to play with on video and promote and review, I presume. Again, I really don't know much about this channel channel because it was already gone by the time I heard of the situation and again I don't know anything about the li the little kid sphere on YouTube so I don't exactly know the ins and outs of this kind of content but anyways they were they pretty much had it made at least this lady had it made and mo the public didn't know any of this was going on behind the scenes it really makes you wonder how many situations like this are going on on YouTube that are just waiting to be uncovered or maybe will never be uncovered until well after these kids are or are, are adults and can speak out against this for themselves and you know after they're out of this toxic environment it it truly gets me choked up a bit um if you can't tell already i'm very very disturbed over all this because i just just before recording this i read through all of this and just felt absolutely heartbroken for all of these children but anyways back to my main point i think youtube should just shit can this kind of content because obviously there's this is a massive problem on the platform that the, these kind of children uh children catered channels run by evil people who again just see the kids that are that they their kids as dollar signs to perform in front of a camera and they could put it on youtube for monetary gain that's all they care about these children for this woman daddy o5 probably several other examples that escape my mind right now but this is obviously a problem with the family friendly catered content sphere here on youtube there's uh, there's been way too many of these cases and i think youtube should just stop promoting these kind of videos should stop allowing the these kind of videos on their on their site because shit like this can happen but that's just my two cents regarding this whole situation well there is a silver lining though when uh michelle was in police custody she was facing up to 50 years in prison the physical abuse these children faced and the sexual abuse on top of that made her sentence very, very lengthy. And remember the biological daughter I mentioned in the beginning uh, of this portion who brought this to the authorities' attention and was able to get her monster of a mother behind bars? Well, she has custody of some of the kids now. She is 19 years old. And you might be wondering why the daughter didn't, uh, didn't bring this to light earlier. This channel has been around since 2012. Uh, it's because the, the, the daughter, she has since moved out. She has been away from the home for a few years now. She she was a regular guest in these videos, but she didn't witness any of this abuse until just earlier this year, and she was even told by some of the kids the, the hard abuse they went through. So don't knock her too much for not reporting on this er sooner, but at the very least, she did it, and these kids are away from this woman um they're 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 in better hands now some of the kids are in foster care now waiting for a family to adopt them uh hopefully a much better family who won't abuse them but anyways the, the these kids are in much better hands now they are safe they're not being <sighs> terribly abused anymore and there's also one other silver lining that i think is the best thing about this story hands down Michelle Hobson, just last month in November, died in a hospital in Arizona. Now, I don't know the cause of death. I don't know if it had anything related to her killing herself uh, because she didn't want to, you know, spend all of that time in prison. Uh, like, yeah, she's going to actually survive that. She's in her late 40s. Um, but regardless, I, I don't know if this is her. that was her just avoiding jail time or an ill... or she... Uh, con contracted an illness or anything, but all I know is she died in a Arizona hospital, and that's all that matters. She is dead. Rot in hell, you wicked bitch. And so, those are the 10 worst YouTubers of 2019, in my book at least. You might be screaming right now and saying, why didn't you include this one? Why didn't you include that one? Because these are the ones that stuck out to me the most, and the ones that I felt I had the most to say about. So, yeah, there you go. There's your answer. So, 
Fantastic Adventures gets the crown of Worst YouTuber of 2019, but there's one honorable mention that I want to get into for uh, just just briefly. I'm not going to talk about them at length or anything, but there's one dishonorable mention, I should say, that I do want to put out there. Here you go. The dishonorable mention goes to... I'm too lazy to add a drum roll sound effect. Uh, I've been working on this video long enough, and this video is long enough, so I'm just going to be lazy and bang on the table that is right next to me. And the dishonorable mention is... Manny Quackio. Now, I've already made a rant on him just a few weeks ago, so I'm not gonna reiterate everything I said in that rant here. He's a piece of shit. He's a felon. He has a serious ego problem. He focuses way too much on his quote-unquote haters and trolls. But it came to my attention that in a few videos, he put my name very creepily in the description of his videos, and I really don't understand why he did that. Uh, I don't see the reasoning behind that, but he did that. It was in a couple of his videos, I'm not sure if he does that now, but it, it, regardless, that's that's a little weird, dude. You, you say that I'm obsessed with you, yet you do that, and also, not to mention, you've made alt accounts because you can't comment on with your, with your main account on my videos for whatever reason. You've used alts to insult me, uh you know, state your, you know, talk about your toxic masculinity in the comments as well. Oh, men don't worry about other men. Uh, stop worrying about other men, dude. You're gay and a beta male and a feminist, probably. Yada, yada, yada. The, 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 the typical shit you'd, you'd expect from a stupid teenage edgelord anti-SJW. Anyways, Manny, sorry you didn't make the cut, but there were way larger pieces of shit out there in 2019. Maybe you'll make next year's list. Who knows? But anyways, that's it. Another year down. It's hard to believe I've already done, what, four of these already? <clears throat> I can't wait to see what 2020 holds. Fuck it, I can't wait to see what the whole decade holds for, for, for YouTube. I know there's going to be plenty more scandals, plenty of more fuck-ups from YouTube, plenty of more fear-mongering, too, surrounding uh, certain changes YouTube makes and certain policies YouTube implements that people will freak the fuck out over and treat, treat it like it's much worse than it really is, like COPPA or that thing in YouTube's guidelines where it said they will get rid of... Uh, on December 10th, they will get rid of, uh, terminate, I should say, certain channels that uh, aren't commercially viable, and then people acted like there's going to be a massive purge, and every channel that doesn't, that isn't monetized is going to get terminated. Well, guess what? It's December 31st at the time I'm uploading this video. It's not December 31st right now, but it is past December 10th. My channel is still here. Every other channel that isn't monetized or is demonetized is still here. I'm so tired of the stupid fear-mongering surrounding a lot of what YouTube does. It, it, it's truly stupid, and I can't believe I took part in that at one point. Anyway, thank you for tuning in and watching this for over 50 minutes. Jesus Christ. Uh, thank you for tuning in to the premiere. I am very thankful for everyone who has tuned in, if anyone chooses to tune into this. And stick around for the entire duration of this video, and shoot the shit with me and others in the chat throughout the entire duration of this video. I don't know, I can't predict the future. For all I know, there's zero people who made it this far. Anyway, if you are still watching this and didn't get bored like 30 minutes ago, thank you so much for sticking around and, bear and being able to tolerate listening to me talk for nearly an hour. Anyway, what I do know for sure is I'm going to end this video now. I hope your 2019 was good. Mine was blech. But hopefully yours is a lot better, and hopefully your 2020 is even better than your 2019, or if your 2019 was shit, hopefully your 2020 is actually a good year, and hopefully the upcoming decade will treat you well, and will be filled with many, many amazing memories, and overall will be long and prosperous for you, because I know that probably will not be the case for me. Anyway, oof. I'm finally done here. You can you, you can move on with your day now and do something that is actually productive with your time now. Anyway, that's all I have to say. Bye-bye.